I've been trying out Celestron's top-of-the-line Regal M2 100 extra low dispersion plotting scope and it's really an impressive optical instrument really been having a lot of fun with it now it is a big scope one thing you notice is uh, it has a, a magnesium alloy body which makes it uh, lighter and rugged and of course the rugged is what this is all about nitrogen filled and uh, waterproof really after a while of being around it you don't really notice its size so much you just, just kind of get used to it you know, it's not, uh, it weighs about uh, four pounds or something like that. It's really not a big deal. But, you know, what we really want this scope for is the way it handles dark conditions. And the business end, of course, of it is this 100 millimeter objective lens, which has Celestron's proprietary XLT coating. And all the lenses are multi coated, and again, it's nitrogen filled to keep the moisture out. Now, the combination of the special XLT coating on the lenses and the extra low dispersion lenses and the coating on the prism in here really reduces uh, chromatic aberration to a very, very minimum. Basically, I've had to deal with uh, pretty bad weather conditions while I was testing this out. So I've tested this out in a lot of cloudy, even rainy and dark conditions. And this 100 millimeter lens with the uh, extra low dispersion and the coating really lets the light in, really uh, lets you have some fun even in, in adverse conditions. Sun is down and that's at full 67 power magnification with 1.5 zoom on the phone at a distance of 40 feet. That's a pretty impressive quality for dark, getting dark out. So 100 millimeters makes a big difference in light transmission. Sixty seven power, sun is down, forty feet away, one point five zoom on the phone. This is a time of day when the little hummingbirds really fight for their nectar. Of course, it has a, uh, a ring on it here to uh, cut out the glare of the sun or any kind of side glare and also keep the uh, rain from spattering on the lens as much as possible when you're out in the rain. It also has a uh, sighting on it to help you sight it when you're out sighting on something in a distance. And it comes with a nice proper lens cover for protection. And really, the fit and finish of this entire thing is just impressive. Again, it's the top of the line Celestron Regal M2 100ED. And some of the features is it has a rotating tripod collar with nice firm detents in it, as you can hear. And most importantly, it has a real nice dual focus system. You know, dual focus systems are, are fairly common. This one has a real nice, smooth, firm action. And I really like the uh, fine adjustment because when you're using a scope this big with this much power, uh, you really want to adjust the focus as fine as possible. And at the eyepiece end, it has a 22 to 67 power eyepiece. And the eyepiece is a standard 1.25 inch threaded eyepiece, which is compatible with many other uh, eyepieces that both Celestron makes and other manufacturers might make. But it's really easy to swap out. You just loosen the locking collar and unscrew the eyepiece. And you can see the quality of the eyepiece is exceptional. And you can put uh, other eyepieces in there, maybe adapt it more for if you want to do uh, astronomy or something like that. Celestron also makes a couple of fixed magnification eyepieces just for this scope. Uh, one of them is a, a wide angle eyepiece that you just replace with this. And the other is the one that has extra long eye relief. For my primary use is animal watching and bird watching. And the eyepiece that comes with it is, is quite, quite good for that. So you just uh, screw it back in. Everything has a nice, firm, tight, well-built feel to it. And you get it about centered and then you just lock it down. From 22 power to 67 power. And that's a lot of power. <laughs> I was, uh, I'll show you a lot of examples. Most of the practice I did it on hummingbirds, so I'll show you a lot of hummingbird examples 
at a distance and this thing really brings them in. I wear glasses when I use a spotting scope so I have it all the way down but you can adjust your eye relief with whether you have glasses or not to whatever fits best for you by adjusting the uh, eye cup. Now the other thing too is that the eye cup unscrews and that's one of the things I really like about the scope is the flexibility. You can unscrew the eyepiece to expose a regular 1.25 inch threads. With a T-ring adapter that's included, you can attach a, a mount for a uh, camera. In my case, a Canon EF mount. And it goes on there quite firmly. And again, everything really fits nice and solid. And so you can just attach a Canon EF camera like this T5i and you can hear it lock. I've already done it in advance, but you can adjust the set screws to make sure that your camera orientation is correct with the scope. This is a, a T5i crop sensor Canon uh, digital SLR and it just connects right there. That's simply. You can also, using a Canon EF to Canon R mount adapter, attach something like an R6 or an R5 to this scope. And it's just that simple. It's amazing. Just that nice firm lock right there. And you just want to make sure you got everything tightened up, but you can just see what a nice, neat uh, connection that is. And I'm not going to go into a lot of detail of what the results of digiscoping, because that's a complex subject in itself. So I'll make another video at a later date showing you the results of using the uh, Canon EF body camera and a Canon mirrorless uh, camera like the R6 through this spotting scope. I just wanted to show you how uh, versatile the eyepiece is and the whole mounting system for doing any number of things. So you just pop the uh, R6 off like that. Everything fits nice and neat. So we'll take the T-ring adapter with the Canon EF camera mount off. And I really like the fit and finish of everything and the way everything fits nice and firm and snug. And we'll take that off, set that aside. Put the eye cup back on, and now you're back in adjustable. So it's really easy to work with. Now it comes also with an eyepiece cover, a nice uh, aluminum cover that's threaded and covers covers the entire eyepiece and screws on nice and firm, which is really good for uh, transport and protection of your eyepiece. Now generally, you want to use this kind of a large spotting scope on a pretty uh, solid uh, tripod because of course zoomed in in the distance like you are with this scope at extreme extreme zoom it's you know the, any little jiggling is going to you know cause a problem with photography not so much a problem with video because it might be a little initial jiggle with the video uh, and then it'll stabilize even on a real windy day a tripod like this is going to jiggle in a really strong wind which sometimes happens when you're out in the wide open spaces uh, spotting uh, animals or birds at a far distance. I didn't have any problem at all mounting this on a, on a moderately strong tripod. Uh, I mean, it's a strong tripod, but a moderately heavy tripod. And just the standard uh, tripod mount that's on here worked fine for me. Even with the R6 on there, which without the lens, you know, of course, is, uh, is not as heavy, but the R6 is uh, considerably heavier than the T5i. When you start putting large DSLRs on here, uh, for uh, digiscoping with your mirrorless camera or your Canon EF body or any number of accessories that you might put on for stargazing. The 100 millimeter version of the scope comes with this extra heavy duty balancing plate which is really uh, strong. It feels like it's made out of CNC aluminum with really heavy hardware on it. And that's so that you can uh, attach this to your uh, scope and then attach it to the tripod and then find that right balance point if you're, you know, obviously if you start to put uh, heavier and heavier objects uh, hanging off the eyepiece, uh, which can handle it, point of balance is here. This allows you to move that point of balance and get the nice mounting point for your scope with the easiest way to use it without putting a lot of extra stress on the scope or the tripod. So this is really a nice feature for the large scope that comes in, and this is really well made and really solid. And again, this just depends on whether you need to use it or not. Now, some of the other things you can do with this scope, you can do digiscoping with your smartphone instead of a DSLR camera, and there's a couple of ways to do that. And I'm not going to go into detail on these today because I'm just going over the basics of the scope, but what you can do is uh, 
Here's a Celestron version of a uh, digiscoping adapter for smartphones. And that goes on like that, and it's got a three axis uh, up, down, and in and out adjustable, so you can get that perfect adjustment with your phone. And this works uh, well, and I'll do a separate video of digiscoping with this scope at a later date. And another kind of an adapter that's out there is this is a three-way adapter like this. And if you want to do, especially if you want to do horizontal, you can actually turn this sideways and clamp that down on because you got really good hardware here to work with. And this has uh, got rubber protection on it. So you can also do horizontal or vertical with any number of uh, quality cell phone adapters, but you really want to get ones that are three axis adjustable to get that perfect adjustment. But it's really a versatile uh, setup here with your eyepiece so that you can take this really high quality 100 millimeter <laughs> ED spotting scope and from this point back where you have your 1.25 uh, standard uh, attachment, you can do all sorts of things with this. The other thing that comes with this is a carrying case, which is nice uh, because you can leave it on there when you're using it and carry it around and protect it. It has a real nice uh, shoulder sling on it, but this, this is kind of handy for a big scope like this. Yeah, the carrying case uh, for the Celestron 100ED is really nice. It's uh, strong and it's got a uh, shoulder strap on it, which is great for uh, carrying it at, uh, at, least, at least short distances to a shoot. You know, it's not that big of a deal really once you get used to it to throw it over your shoulder carry a tripod and head out and did some uh, great views of uh, birds and wildlife. And of course the case can also be used on the tripod and I'll show you an example of that. To summarize my experience with the Celestron Regal M2 100ED scope, which is their top of line model, it's really an awesome scope. Price point is actually very reasonable at under $1,000, and it's got the magnesium body, proprietary XLT coated optics, nitrogen filled, very robust, precision and accurate focusing mechanism, fast focusing too, which is important. Fast to get it in the ballpark, and then very fast to get that fine adjustment. The eyepiece is uh, very good. Magnification up to 67 power, that's a lot of magnification. And really just a, an all around nice scope. And one thing I'll say about it is you might be put off by the, the thought of uh, having such a big scope. But really when you spend some time with it, after a while the size of it just doesn't really become an issue anymore. You just get used to it. And you know, if you're doing something out like at Yellowstone National Park or at a Florida wetlands or some kind of place where you're spotting animals and birds, at a distance, uh, you really can't go wrong with the, the bigger scope to let a lot of light in. And for a big scope, it's extremely clear and bright and uh, very little, if any, chromatic aberration. And the other thing is I use it a lot in actual almost dark conditions and you can still see and identify and get pretty decent videos of birds, which I'll show you. The two backyard creatures that are the most curious and possessive are the blue jays and squirrels. I know if I put something on a tripod in the backyard in the morning, it won't be but a few minutes before they are standing on it checking it out. This awesome new Celestron 22 to 67 power, 100 millimeter extreme low dispersion spotting scope was no exception. In fact, I knew the squirrels would look in both ends of the scope and that the jays would definitely land on both ends of the scope without any question. That's just what they do. Of course they know where tripods go, rewards follow. And they get an extra bonus of peanuts for helping me out with these photo shoots. Don't try this at home unless you make sure everything is super strong and secure. And even then there are no guarantees. I did cover the eyepiece with lens tissue to avoid scratching. But you can see the blue jay removed it anyway without any damage. The occasional squirrel pee or blue jay poop can just be removed with a towel moistened with warm soapy water. 